In this video we're looking at the non-inverting amplifier. Here is my circuit. I've built it using an op-amp. My potentiometer provides an input along the yellow wires to the non-inverting input, which is the one marked with the plus. My two resistors, labeled the RF for the feedback resistor and RI for the input resistor, form a potential divider and that feeds back a fraction of the output voltage to the inverting input. This is negative feedback. Amplifiers like this always have negative feedback. The values I've used are 100K and 100K. Our amplifier theory gives us that the gain is the out over the in is 1 plus RF over RI. Let's see how that translates for this circuit. So our gain should be 1 plus 100K over 100K, 100 by 100 is 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2, and I've put a plus here to emphasize the fact that it's non-inverting. The output voltage should be 2 times the input voltage. Let's see what happens when we change the input voltage. So starting at 0 volts in, we have 0 volts out. If I make my input bigger to 1 volt, I get 2 volts out, so that seems to be working quite nicely. It works for negative values as well. If I go to minus 1 volt, I get minus 2 volts out, which is working very nicely. And if I go higher, you can see it's a completely linear relationship. So if I go to 3 volts in, I get 6 volts out. So there's my amplifier working as I would expect it to. Put it back to 0 briefly, which is actually harder than you think. That will do. What happens if I change either of these two resistor values? I'm going to start off by changing the feedback resistor for a new value of 470K. There it is. And I'm going to work out what I expect the gain to be. So here is my new gain equation. It's 1 plus RF, which is 470, divided by 100, 470k divided by 100k is 4.7, so my gain becomes 1 plus 4.7, and a bit of quick mental math there gives my gain is therefore 5.7. So this is the gain of my amplifier, and again it's positive. So let's see if that correlates to what we're looking at on the screen here. If I make my input voltage to 1 volt, It's pretty close. Now, my voltmeters are only reading to one significant figure, and therefore it's very difficult to get it to be exactly one volt. But if I do try, there we go, my output is 5.7 volts, as expected, a gain of times 5.7. An interesting question is what happens if we make this the other way around? So I'll just return them back to approximately zero. If I take out the 470k and the 100k and swap them over, so now my 100k is now my feedback resistor and my 470k is my input resistor, like that. And if I take all my circuits out of the way, I can show you this. It looks like this. So that's the circuit I've got. I've got a large value resistor my input and a small value resistor for my output. Let's see what we would expect. Well, the gain should be 1 plus 1 over 400 over 470. So I might need to get a calculator out for this one. So here is my calculator, and if I type in 100 divided by 470, I get 0.21 add my 1 and I get 1.21. So my gain should be, with the resistors in this order, plus 1.2. Okay, so let's see if that correlates at all. I'll change my input voltage. Make my input 1 volt. And there we go, the output is 1.2 as expected. Now an interesting thing to notice here is that for this amplifier the gain, no matter how we have our resistors, 
is always going to be greater than or equal to 1. We can't have a gain of less than 1. So this amplifier cannot provide any attenuation. It can only provide amplification. And finally, I'd like to think about what happens if we get rid of these resistors completely, which seems like a bit of a mad thing to do. So what I'm going to do is take out this resistor here, the feedback resistor, and I'm just going to put in a wire link. I've used the same color wire, a piece of green. I'm going to take out this resistor entirely and not replace it with anything at all. Remove my resistor labels, and I have now built this circuit, a much simpler version of my previous amplifier. And what we can see here, now that the input and the output voltage are very similar, if not identical. Let's try changing the input. And as you can see, the voltage of the output stays exactly the same as the voltage of the input. This is called a unity gain amplifier or a voltage follower, and it's very useful for connecting one circuit to another. It doesn't actually amplify the signal, but it does allow you to connect one circuit to another with this in between acting as a, a buffer, if you like. I've now reverted to my original amplifier with a pair of 100K resistors, this circuit here, which if you remember had a gain of plus two, so I expect my output to be twice as big as my input voltage. I've changed my voltmeters for an oscilloscope type display I'm going to press play, and at the moment the input and output are both zero. If I make the input bigger, you see the output is twice as big, and if I make the input negative, the output is twice as negative, and if I just allow it to auto scale, I can draw my own sine wave. And what you notice here is that the output and input voltages are in phase with each other. This is the output, this is the input, when the input is negative, the output is negative. When the input is positive, the output is positive.